this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville and guess what? It is time for another installment of our Rainbow Rainforest. So this time we are making a toucan. Now toucans are a noisy bird. A, they sound like a frog and sometimes they even bark like a dog. Now another thing is their bill is like a Swiss army knife. They use it to reach fruit, attract the opposite sex, I mean, the bigger the better. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> and its bill can control the blood flow, which helps them to keep cool in the hot rainforest. Toucans, they, you know, this bill, as massive and awesome as it is, can sometimes get in the way. So they're not really the most graceful of flyers, and therefore they spend more time hopping from tree to tree you know it sleeps in the trees i mean that's that's where birds stay right so it kind of will do this contortionist act like it bends its head backwards and then tucks its beak under its wing and then flips its tail feathers over its head i mean you know what this is just you know a night of restless sleep for me personally but now what is the main threat to the toucan well honestly it's habitat loss and hunting and often when they take fruit from orchards, farmers will sometimes hunt them as pests to keep them from stealing their crops. And also these colorful birds are sold as pets. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Suburban America is a little bit different than the rainforest in South America. So, you know, it, it's a challenge for these guys. So it's best that they stay in the rainforest because they are vital to keeping the rainforest alive. Because if we've learned anything, from these adventures in our rainforest critters that we're recreating in our quilt, it's that pooping is important. And just like our armadillos spread avocados throughout Mexico, the toucan droppings will help keep the seeds of the different fruits and native fruits that they eat spreading throughout the rainforest to help maintain the diversity of the vegetation. Now that we've been properly schooled on the toucan, <laughs> let's make one. For the toucan, we're gonna have the lemon ice paired with um, this leaf print, and then the darker Kona solid is paired with this print. And then you're also gonna use this same material on the actual toucan right under the eye, but everything can be cut from that fat eight that you got in your kit. Then we brought this over from the sloth. So we're going to use this and this to make up the toucan beak. And then we also have the white for the toucan's chest. And then the steel gray that we're gonna use for the toucan's branch, we're going to reserve the rest and put with the tapir. Finally, the toucan should be done out of charcoal. And some of you might remember that mine fell out of the car and I lost one of my pieces. So I lost the actual toucan. Now this is like a dark, really dark brown. And I think I'm gonna switch this out with black, but nonetheless, that's, that's what I'm gonna call my toucan. And then I'm just gonna pull some black scraps out of my bag for, for his nose there. And like any month, it starts methodically with making all of our leaves. And in the handout that is in the description of this video and on our Bernina of Naperville website under classes and events and the handout section, you're going to um, see that I give you the assignments for all the leaves and everything that you need to cut and which ones go which way and all of that stuff. So just chain piece, press. I like to press my seams open on these and then you add those squares to make your half square triangles. And I've started doing this more in an assembly line fashion as we get through all of these projects. So I go corner to corner and then I just kind of sew on the very edge of the material just so I don't have to keep stopping and starting the machine. And then I only trim the linen part off and that just helps me get a more rectangular base when I sew these leaves together. And I just keep, you know, plugging away, always re referencing the pattern so I know which leaf unit I'm actually making. 
And then there's some other little units as we get into building the toucan body. This is a piece where we sew uh, from corner to corner on a square, then we add another square on top and sew from the opposite corner to corner. And once again, I'm not always trimming all of the fabric away from this. And a little tip, if you ever get like your little tip stuck under your machine like that, then sometimes you wanna turn it around and start the other direction or use your straight stitch needle plate. But now I'm gonna just trim that. Only the linen part there that you see. And then just, you know, I finger press as I build these, then I bring them over to my Laura Star to do the, the rest of the work for me. And label, label, there I am. I didn't have my clips with me this time, so I had to use my magic pins to pin everything, but I would be completely lost if I didn't use these labels. Who knows what the toucan would look like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then even on some of these small pieces, I'm going to trim. And then just finger press over. And then I'll put this unit aside because now it's time to start building the pieces around the eye. And that's that lemon ice fabric that we used for some of the leaf units, but also we're using it around the toucan's eye. And this is really important. Maybe you wanna do a seam gauge to make sure that you get everything just right, because those little seams are teeny tiny when I went to sew this together. And I also have started measuring as I go along just a little bit and pressing the seams open when I can just to reduce some of the bulk. And now we have the beak, that big strong beak on the toucan and just always just referring to the pattern piece in the assembly diagram. And now the body. And one of the pages in the handout is I've measured the different units so it will help you keep things straight. So if you ever get into a precarious situation where maybe your seam allowance is a little narrower or fatter than you expected. And then also I did all of these little tail feathers together. And I want you to notice here when I sew these units together like this that are the long rectangles, I'm gonna chain piece them but I don't just trim the linen away in these cases. When I'm assembling these together, I actually leave a quarter inch seam allowance away from each. But on this one there, where it looks like a little square, I'm just cutting my linen. And then once again, finger pressing. And then on these units, I finger press the seams open. And that's kind of sewn like you would sew a binding together. And now those pieces are ready to all be sewn together. And then once I get like a unit assembled, I am going back to my iron and I'm pressing to make sure things stay flat. And then our tail feathers, once they're together, there are some side pieces that you're gonna sew onto them. And once again, you do need to make sure that those are lining up because we've pre-cut those side pieces, so this is a great way to make sure that you're on track with your, with your measuring and your piecing. And now it's time to start building on the toucan. <laughs> and he is really cute. I mean, I'm assuming this, this is a boy because in the bird world, typically the more colorful birds are the male species. But there we have some units. There's a leaf unit assembled the head, the body, and there are the other leaf units. So those are just gonna be put together. And you know, sometimes when I get to these, I will pin, or at least I line up my vital pieces together that need to line up. And I'll stitch those together, give everything a nice pressing. And these blocks are gonna measure at 24 and a half inches. So at the very end, always double check. If they're not perfect, we can deal with that when we sew all of our blocks together with the sashing. So, it's almost done. Let's have a look at this guy. You know, these birds are so colorful, vibrant, wonderful. It's gonna be totally great to see it um, bedizened on our 
quilt top. So, you know, we might not want one as a pet, but we can certainly admire it in this quilt. Now, thank you so much for watching. Next time, we are going to make a squirrel monkey and we'll learn about squirrel monkeys. But in the meantime, if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.